What's up, my dude? Yes, I'm talking to you, you beautiful freaking human being. I've been reading some of your comments and it's come to my attention that some of y'all have no idea who I am. So I thought it's time for me to give you all a proper introduction. My name is Ian Naoto Box. All right, end the video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, all right, I'll, I'll do an introduction. I'm sorry. Today, I'll be going over my whole life story. So without further ado, let's go on a date. Wait. You don't want to go on a date with me? Uh, well, this is awkward. Um, I planned the whole video around you and me going on a date, so I don't know how this is going to work out. The first thing you need to know about me is that my life was different. I grew up as a military brat. And what that means is that my father was in the military. Go figure, Ian. He was in the Navy, so we moved every three years. But um, before even all of that, I'm half white and half Japanese. So my dad is a white one, but he grew up in Africa, in Kenya specifically. And then my mom is Japanese. And my dad met my mom in Japan. He had a pretty hard life and he joined the military when he was 17. And my mom, while he was stationed in Japan, they fell in love, they had me, and we were in Japan for the first three years of my life and I started school there. So my first language was Japanese. And then we moved to Hawaii after three years of being in Japan and my sister was born there. And then I don't remember much from that because that was like my first couple of years of growing up. That was the first time I lived in Hawaii. And after three years, we moved back to Japan and we were in Japan for another three years. I don't remember much from there. I remember like growing up, going to school, trying to make friends, but I was a really awkward kid, y'all. Like I was very introverted. I was very shy. And then we moved to Hawaii again. Now y'all, this is where my life kind of changed. So all this moving kind of forced me to become a little more outgoing, a little more extroverted, but I was very much a turtle and I was obsessed with Roblox. I was very skinny and so I got bullied for it. I was kind of a small kid. And then I think in like seventh grade, I had a huge growth spurt. I was like a, a five foot eight, like sixth grader. It was insane. I was starting to dance. Dancing was like my creative expression. I started doing swimming. I was on the swim team. So I was starting to make friends. I was starting to like get out there. And I was a terrible student at that too. And then I got this stalker. And looking back at it, it was very scary. She followed me home from school once. I came outside to see that there was like a, a bear left outside of my house for me. You know, it could have been cute, but it was kind of creepy because like you don't just follow someone home, you know? It's, it's kind of weird. At parent-teacher conferences, they wouldn't talk about my grades. They would talk about this stalker thing happening. And it was just very weird and my parents were getting worried about it. And then people caught on to the stalker thing. As funny as it is, I made friends through people helping me with having a stalker. For the first time in my life, I had felt like, wow, like I can be outgoing. I can, I can make friends. And from then on, like I found a group of friends that I just really liked. And we were all like nerds. We were like, we, we thought like superpowers were real. We like, we'd watch YouTube videos on like how to like make the force happen and stuff. We'd move doors and stuff like that, but it, in reality, it was just the wind. Or they're just automatic, I don't know. We were kids. <laughs> and then high school started, and it was my freshman year. It was going great. I was making friends. I had my like first real girlfriend. It was amazing. And then my dad got stationed in Italy, which isn't bad. Like any kid would love to go to Europe. Like it'd be amazing. But I was a kid. I was growing. I had my friends who I finally found. I was finding my place. And then all of a sudden, we just got to go to a whole new country. And I was, I was scared, but. I was kind of excited. I went from a very big high school, a very big school, to like one of the smallest schools where everybody knows your stuff and it's just so much drama and I hate drama, I just don't like it. And so that kind of got to me. I started to feel anxiety because as a kid growing up, like you, you just want to live and have fun. You don't want to have people like knowing all your stuff or whatever. But it did give me the opportunity to travel to a lot of countries. Like I had really bad grades in Hawaii, so I was like, okay, um, if I want to go to college, I need to really work on my grades here. So that was great. But then some stuff started happening. Um, I won student body president, then I got caught attempting to cheat, and then I lost student body president. Like the day that I got it, it was, the worst feeling. To work so hard for months and months and months to get something that you wanted since like the beginning of high school and then to lose it just like that. And then not shortly after, one of our dogs passed away. And that was really sad. Cause like I grew up with that dog in my entire life. I couldn't get myself out of bed for like a whole week. It was the worst. I remember my dad asking me if I'm okay. And I'm just like, I just wanna, I told him that I wanted to like end my life basically. It was the worst. It was, um, it was the first time I ever felt like that. So I just want to warn you guys, just trigger warning about that. Sorry, I should have said trigger warning beforehand, but that was the first time I had that feeling and it was the worst. So luckily, I know it's like a really weird transition, but luckily I've spoken to some therapists about these feelings and professionals in the past. And I've come to learn that what I really needed um, when I was first going through these feelings of depression and anxiety was someone to talk to. I just didn't know who the right person would be. Which is why today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp, spelled H-E-L-P. 
If you think you might be feeling depressed, stressed, overwhelmed, or just overall not feeling like yourself, BetterHelp is here to help. I once went through severe depression and anxiety um, in college, which I'll talk about later on in the video, but talking to a therapist is what really helped me get through and get back on track on things. And if I hadn't spoken to that therapist back then, I probably wouldn't be doing what I love right now, which is talking to you guys, making YouTube videos, and just living life. So I'm super thankful that I did, and I'm super thankful for the people who told me to. So if you're thinking about therapy, this could be perfect for you. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to help and listen to you. You can also talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your convenience. And there's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapists network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Then you schedule secure video and phone sessions. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages, and everything you share is completely confidential. You can request a new therapist at no charge at any time. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist, and get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash Ian Boggs. Now, back to the video. I'm gonna change. Whoa, are we back from our date to chill at my place? Things are moving a little too fast, okay? But I'm okay with it. <laughs> oh, chill! But yeah, I was too young and naive to understand what therapy was back then, so instead I talked to my parents and friends about it and took some time away from literally everyone to try to feel like myself again. So this is where my persona shifted for a pretty big amount of time from someone who was very, very, very creative to someone who decided that maybe a more traditional, secure, and respectable job would be much better than maybe trying to pursue being a youtuber or something but i was getting to a point in my life in high school where i was like i need to really get my shit together i went to the library and i came across a book that said like top jobs in america of course the number one job was a doctor i was like okay being a doctor that'd be cool what can i do to like impact people and like impact people in a positive way then i came across doctors without borders and i was like oh wow doctors without borders they go to countries where people really 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 need help and um go to places that are extremely dangerous. That's what I wanted to do as a doctor. And so the time came to apply for, you know, colleges. I was going to my senior year. I wanted to apply to Ivy League schools. My grades actually got really good. I went from a 2.7 GPA to like a 4.0 plus. I learned how to study. Like I really learned how to study. Actually getting caught for cheating forced me to be a better student because I never wanted that happen. I never wanted that to happen again. It was the most embarrassing thing ever. So it was actually kind of a good thing. There's no failures, only lessons. Pitbull said that. Mr. Well, what? I decided to go to UCI. I think it was a blessing because there are so many creators in Southern California, y'all. It's insane. Came to UCI, I was like, I'm gonna be a doctor. I'm gonna do all these things. I literally joined every single organization I could find and I burnt myself out within the first quarter. And so <laughs> I actually got kind of chubby towards the end of my senior year in high school because I thought I needed to bulk to get buff. And so I lost like 20 pounds my first quarter of college just due to stress and like not eating. And I came back to visit my parents over break and they were like, Ian, you look so good. And I didn't tell them the reason why I lost so much weight, but I was just like, yeah, like, I guess I guess I look better now, huh? Because I'm stressed out. <laughs> I got really sad. Uh, I left a lot of things. I left certain friend groups that weren't benefiting me um, as a person. It was kind of toxic to my own life, so I left them. And then by the time the end of my first year came, I went from being like one of the top students in biology to one of the worst. When it comes down to it, y'all, some people want it really bad. Some people know what they want. For me, I didn't have that with biology or chemistry or physics or math. Those things never really came easy to me. I was, my first year, I ended up being really bad. And towards the end of the year is actually when I bought my first, my own camera. And it was the best thing ever. It's kind of what saved me. And it's crazy because I stayed over the summer to take more classes. And what had happened was I started making videos every weekend again. Still not doing so great with classes. I was way more focused on my videos than I was with school. So I actually started like taking, taking photos for people for money. I didn't know you could do that. So I started doing that for like a business. And so for me, I basically found a market within like graduation photos, weddings and portraits and all that kind of stuff. I actually switched from bio to film and I was much happier, but because I switched, um, some stuff happened. So uh, the last extracurricular I did at college was being an RA, a resident advisor. It was what I wanted since I was like a freshman. I just wanted to do this because it's such a cool job to have. You get free housing, you get free food. You don't get paid, <laughs> but you get paid in love, which is cool. 
No, I, I love my residents. They were great. They were like, they're like family to me. I used to be a really big people pleaser. And so I, I worry too much about like making other people happy. And it was unhealthy. Like I said, I switched from bio to film. And so I wanted to take as many units as I could to catch up. I overwhelmed myself. I was working two jobs. Um, I was doing RA and I just had literally no time for myself. Got very anxious because I didn't know if I was doing a good job. And I lost my sense of self. So there was one time I was walking towards class and there's this bridge. And I was walking on the bridge. I actually walked to the edge of the bridge and I looked below and I honestly thought about jumping off of it. It was the lowest I had ever been in my entire life. I never said this on camera, <laughs> so um, it's really hard for me to say, but um, people put these expectations on ages where you need to be somewhere at a certain age. And at 20, I had thought that I had, I would be like, I had this un unrealistic expectations for myself where like, I would, I would be this big like person and whatever I wanted to do. And I would be totally financially independent and all this kind of stuff. But I was so far from it that it caused me to not feel like myself. Actually, I don't even know if I even told my, Parents this. So my parents, if you're watching this, I love you so much. And they were actually there for me. I just didn't know how to tell them. Um, I've, I've overcame this now, but if it weren't for my dad or my mom or my family, it would have been rough. And so I told my manager about this after it happened. She told me I should see a therapist. And I'm so happy I did because I told my therapist exactly what was going on in my life. And she told me, well, it's not crazy that you're feeling this way because you're not giving any time to yourself. I thought about it and I was like, holy crap, you're so right. And then she said, what makes you happy in life? And I was like, just being creative, like going out, taking photos, dancing, being artistic. She was like, well, why don't you go do that? Like, why don't you just take a break from whatever you're doing? If it's stressing you out, just don't do it for a little bit and go and take a break and like do those things that make you happy. So literally that day, right after that conversation with the therapist, <laughs> I went to the gym. I already felt happier as I went to the gym, did something for myself, hung out, ate some food that I loved, felt so much better. That weekend, I left campus to go see my grandparents and on the way, I just took so many photos. Anywhere I saw that looked like a great place for a photo, stopped, took a photo, Loved it and came back feeling like myself 100%. I honestly think if I hadn't done that, I genuinely wouldn't be here making videos for you all, living out the life that I've always wanted since I was a kid, making those little videos. So yeah, you gotta do things that you wanna do. Go figure, but like, you have to, you know? But I ended up doing that. I wasn't like super successful, but like I made a good amount of money from photography. I actually went to Costa Rica on my first solo trip for an Airbnb gig. It's crazy, like I went to the mountains with this stranger that I met. He carried a machete, so it was like even more scary, but he ended up being like this really nice dude. And um, we hitchhiked into the mountains for like 13 hours. And then we ate like tons of pizza when we got back. Then I came back to California, feeling so great. And then COVID hit. I was on track to be a travel photographer. I wanted to do that full time. I wanted to be like Sam Colder, like a travel influencer type content creator, but things don't always go the way you want them to. When the quarantine first started, it was my last spring break of college. And I was like, man, what am I gonna do? Because we couldn't travel anymore. And that's what I wanted to do for a living. But here I am stuck at home. If I don't create something, I'm gonna go crazy. And around that time, TikTok was going viral. I saw my friends going viral and I was like, you know what? I can do that too. I wanna do that. Let's move over here. And then I, I just I just kept it going. By the end of the week, I, I had hit 8,000 followers and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. I went from like 300 followers to 8,000 followers in a week. And then I started doing like three videos a day for uh, the rest of the month I, and I got to 100K. I didn't tell much people this, but at 100K, I was like, I kind of knew my brain that I'm gonna turn this into a career because I just, I wanted it so bad, you know? And you all supported me. So it just, it, it meant the world. Um, I had never felt that kind of love through the internet before. It was great. Um, of course it was stressful, but I loved it. I love making content. I love creating. At 300K, 300K is when I stopped doing photography. I wasn't making that much from social media, but I was like, I'm really liking this. Like, this is so fun. I love entertaining. And then I decided to drive all the way from California to Colorado because my parents moved to Colorado and stay with them and just pursue this social media thing. Then two months later, I hit a million and I'm like okay this is cool but I'm not making that much money and then I get to 1.7 million like five months later I didn't have any friends in Colorado that was my first time like living there the anxiety creeped back in 
and it wasn't a great time for me. So after five months, I decided I need to get the heck out of Colorado. Came back to California, anxiety was still really, really bad because basically I had enough saved. I had, I had a good amount saved, but if I hadn't like made it in six months or like made it in six months or been financially stable, I would have gone broke. And my parents told me, you know, like that if something happens and they'll help me out and they'll be fine. So I had a plan to fall back on. Like I, I could, I could, you know, go back to school or whatever. Even though I was really anxious and really like I, I should have been talking to a therapist. Like I really should have. I was doing basically what I thought I had to, which was like anime videos, Japanese videos, comedy videos, but that wasn't really my passion. So like a couple months go by, three months go by. I get to 3 million, which is big. It's, I went from 1.7 to 3 million, which is a big, big change, but I wasn't happy with the content I was making. I wanted to write stories. I wanted to act. I found a place in LA, moved out there, and I had a couple of friends through social media and they helped me out. Took in all this advice from other big creators and like I was learning, I was doing stuff, I was getting on with acting and stuff like that. The one lesson I learned from acting actually is that the only way you're gonna ever make it is by being yourself. And when I heard those words, I was like, the anxiety was kind of lifted from me. Cause one of the biggest reasons I had anxiety was because I was like, what if people don't like me? You know, who the fuck cares if no one likes you? Be yourself. Don't worry about anything else. There was one day where uh, I just made a video, just for the fun of it. Just like a really short story with B-roll on it, like really cool idea that I had, like a short story. Posted it, that was the first video I posted that was an original idea that I loved, that got over a million likes. And I was like, holy crap. All I ever needed to do to be happy and grow really quickly is to do whatever I want to and be myself. As long as, you know, like my audience liked it too. And so I did that. Things just started exploding. Like my TikTok grew from 3 million to now over 11 million. YouTube, we grew from 15K to 5 million. And I was able to move out of my apartment into this house. It's just insane to me. And I know I say it a lot, but y'all, thank you. Like, thank you for liking my content and supporting me and doing all this stuff, you know? like. It's been insane. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because y'all know me, right? You know me through my videos. I, I'm myself in my POV videos. I'm myself in my skits. I'm myself in my vlogs. So I wanted to do this because if you supported me for this long, then you deserve to know who you've supported. So um, yeah, I love you, you know, you're great. Thanks. And if you don't mind, um, you know, like drop in the comments below, like drop your life story, like in a paragraph or however long you want it to be. I, I want to know what your life is like. Yeah, let me, let me see, I'm excited. And, you know, if you don't mind, like hit that like button and that subscribe button, because it'd mean a lot to me. And I want to keep growing our family and I love you guys. So um, yeah, anyways, that just about sums up my whole life story. And I hope to start making more relaxed videos like this where I just like sit down and talk to y'all because I actually really enjoy doing this. Even though my anxiety, what? Even though my ADHD like takes me to like five million different stories, I love doing this. So hopefully I'll see you in this format again soon. But until then, I love you and keep being you, you amazing, beautiful human being. See ya.